Sometimes I interview people and we did personas in the case studies, but we can't explain why we, let's say, did a persona one way or the other. We just picked one random person and we thought we were going to target that, but we don't have the reasoning why. And you should have a reasoning why. You should connect it to some sort of reasoning so that you can actually convince someone or say that this is the evidence. Because if you cannot convince me as a hiring manager that you did the right thing or you did it because you had a specific reason, then how would you convince your team back in the day? It means that you just did it because someone told you to do that from UX perspective or you read up that you have to use personas left and right. If you don't really use it in an appropriate term or you don't link it and make it actionable so it informs some other design choices to follow, then there is no point. I haven't done video like this for, I guess, a couple of years now, or maybe it did in a way on live streams, I get a bit more technical, but this is gonna be a bit technical. I get a lot of questions asked about very, very basics of UX. And one of the frequent questions is to do with personas, empathy maps, archetypes, customer segments, jobs to be done, things of that nature, because people are not sure what to use. And everybody's seeking like a one way to do things, but it's never like that. The tool you use has to be appropriate to the opportunity, to the context, to the challenge at hand. Having said that, a lot Lot of different boot camps, courses, books are going to tell you that you must do personas. In reality, that's not the case. As long as, and this is something you just need to immediately know down at like a basic level, as long as you understand who you're after, who's your user, who's your customer, who you are actually working to improve the life for or design customer experience or user experience or making a product for or you need to empathize with to understand what exactly and how to engage with them and, and, and how to deliver things and exactly why do you even need to to begin with is going to be good. And you could express it in a lot of different ways. You could just draft out a proto persona or you could kind of invest a lot of time and define it. But ultimate goal there for it to work as a vessel, as a communication tool between you, your team, team, maybe some business stakeholders, but for you all to come together to one monolith and say, this is who we're actually after, or this is what our user looks like. This is what we care about. This is what their behaviors are like. This is what their motivations are like. So let's empathize with that and then craft something for them or solve their problems. It's as simple as that. And that information could be expressed in a lot of different ways, but today I wanna to talk to you and compare a few different bits. And one would be the customer segmentation, which is something which you as a designer are gonna start with in a lot of different cases, because a business is gonna to come to you and say, well, our user base is this, and this is what we know about them. And it's gonna be very vague by definition of it. It's gonna be just roughly segmented market of all the different user types and some definition, maybe age groups, maybe their location, maybe genders, involved maybe a lot of different factors which we might consider based on what the product or service is like. The next tool it would be the personas which we do like bread and butter in UX right and this is much more rich definition of it. This is where you would care exactly of who the person is behind the scenes. They're not just a paying customer they're actually a human being and this is what you would outline ultimately with their motivations, goals, needs, challenges. It could be expressed in a lot of different ways but ultimately you're just trying to tell your team, your stakeholders, that we are serving the real person and not just a market segment, a number in a pie chart. Last one would be jobs to be done. But ultimately jobs to be done doesn't really care about the human aspect too much, but it cares what the humans wants to achieve or what do they actually need to get to. And that could be defined and enriched and functional, emotional or social criteria or many other factors ultimately. So this is like the three basic tools you could use to outline who you're 
your users so in any project you probably are going to go through all three and a lot of challenges are going to need specific definition at the specific life cycle of a project let's say the important bit besides actually going and researching deeper of what each and every is i would advise you to think about this in the terms of empathy because ultimately you are there to help your team empathize with who the users are and what their challenges are really like and on the empathy scale let's say from low empathy or your team being able to understand who the actual human being is up until very high like the personas probably would place very high and in the middle somewhere you would have the jobs to be done and then segmentation or high level segments would end up as a low empathy that's naturally how it would scale but from actionability perspective or i guess how tangible that insight is from low to high i would say the jobs to be done probably would be placing the highest the customer segmentation would be probably the lowest and persona somewhere in the middle and of course there is a lot of other factors to consider of what you need to achieve how to place it ultimately if i would to advise you is actually to use them all if the project is lengthy enough and it allows you to do that because you're going to start with some basic hypotheses and high level segments or what the business is targeting right now if it's existing product then you're going to define your own personas for the next iteration and then jobs to be done would allow you to think about the users from their needs perspective which i hammer in a lot of different videos but a simple example could be that let's say i need a taxi to get to a train station from my home getting from a to b is that need is that job i need to get done now it's very channel or device or solution eclectic because it doesn't care of how you're gonna do that doesn't care at that point about any features or how your product's gonna look like or if it's an app or if it's a website what it cares about is the reasoning for people to actually use your service or pay for your service like what do they actually want to do and now you as a researcher as a designer could take that job and could develop further you could also have a persona alongside that job or you could have jobs for a specific persona and then define exactly how you could solve it now looking at all those three again most important bit is that they're not mutually exclusive you should be able to quickly pull up segmentation quickly draft out a proto persona and then maybe make it more presentable into a persona if you want to get someone in and on board with what you want to achieve and then the jobs for that persona usually aligns it well and makes it quite actionable because you can take it into ideations because you have a clear need clear behavior patterns this is what their life looks like let's use Use empathy as a team to empathize and then take that into ideations and come up with some ideas which are not yet bound to a specific feature like oh i need an app with like geolocation that's one ways to do that let's explore all the different ways and then prioritize and arrive at something quick and meaningful to release the value immediately and then develop a product over time so i hope this gives you a bit more clarity of both those tools again everything has to be placed and done in the right ways in the right time with the right reasoning and the right cost effectiveness sometimes i interview people and we did personas in the case studies and and it's almost surprising because that's common in senior roles which is like oh what are you even doing but they can't explain why we let's say did a persona one way or the other we cannot link it to any customer segments or market segmentation which was done in the past or we haven't done that we just picked one random person and we thought we we're going to target that but we don't have the reasoning why and you should have a reasoning why you should connect it to some sort of reason so that you can actually convince someone or say that this is the evidence because if you cannot convince me as a hiring manager that you did the right thing or you did it because you had a specific reason then how would you convince your team back in the day it means that you just did it because someone told you to do that from ux perspective or you read up that you have to use personas left and right if you don't really use it in an appropriate term or you don't link it and make it actionable so it informs some other design choices to follow then there is no point that's ultimately the bottom line. So consider that you do use the tools to their full extent and in the right purpose. So I hope this is useful. If so, smash that like button, leave the comments down below, subscribe to this channel. And on that note, I'll see you next time.